Hier is Klaassen. Klaassen gaat die strappen. Klaassen scoort. Knap gedaan. Gaksa. Gaksa nog steeds. Gaksa moet voortrekken. Jawel, hij is binnen. En het is Klaassen die scoort deze keer. El Gabas. Ze zijn met z'n drieën voor in Klaassen. Goed gelopen van Klaassen. Huisgems is mee. Klaassen doet het zelf. Hij scoort. Good afternoon, everyone. This week on Footy and Pact, we've got Maritzburg United midfielder Dalen Klassen. Uh, Dalen previously played for Ajax Cape Town, Ajax Amsterdam. Um, he's played in Belgium, he's played in Poland. Um, he's also played for Bitvist Wits, and now he's at Maritzburg United. Dylan, ha Dylan how's it? Um, now nah, I'm all good in yourself, Mbo. Good, good. So, Can't complain. Firstly, uh, you guys are now back in camp, I see, and you played over the weekend. Um, how is it yes. been, after this long break? How have you guys found the, you know, having to go back to playing and that? Well, I can only talk on my behalf, and I can tell you that it's been really hard, though. I mean, like being away from soccer for five months, because normally there's like the longest period. I think like normally it's not even that long. Like this is the longest we've been away from soccer. Yes. So getting into the momentum again and obviously the fitness again. But like with the four weeks that we had prior to the games now, it helped us a lot in terms of the fitness. But as you can see when you watch the matches, you still get tired. Because there's nothing like fitness and match fitness. Yeah. But it's coming there, it's getting there. And I think like you can, like you see a lot of the matches, there's teams, they're getting better and better the more they're playing. And, and so far, I mean, your season, I know it, there was like this interruption, but how would you sum up the season that, firstly, that you've had as a player and the club? Uh, I think we had a good season thus far. We still got five games remaining. Obviously, we're playing to get as high as possible up, up the log. But personally, for me, I felt it was a good season but I always expect more from myself you know because I don't think like one is never satisfied although you're having a good season you still feel like you can do more and personally for me I felt it was a good season for for like confidence in it so with those last five games hopefully it can just we can do better and you never know start of next season on a good note oh, um... Now, Dalen, I mean, a lot of people will want to know. Just get, tell us briefly, where is Dalen from? Oh, uh, well, Umpo, I'm from Alabama, Tlaxdorf. I don't know if you're familiar with the place. It's in Northwest. It's called Matlosana now. Is, is that where Gers Kalkwe comes from? Yes, we're from the same neighborhood. Gers Kalkwe and Moses Van Gil. Yes, yes. Um, okay. We, uh, I know it's the place. same place. The same area also, Alabama. So I'm from there and then I moved to Cape Town when I was 12 years old. Is that when you moved to Ajax? Yes. No, I moved to Ajax. I moved to Cape Town when I turned 12 and I was like six months in Cape Town and then I joined Ajax. Oh, okay. So, so you didn't move to Cape Town specifically to join Ajax? You just moved? No, no, no. I just moved because my father's originally from Cape Town. So we moved to Cape Town. And then I first played at Vasco da Gama for like nice. almost a season. And then I went to Ajax afterwards. So, so you were at Ajax from what? From like under 12? And, until Under 13. Under 13, until you graduated to the yes. first team. That's quite a long time. Yeah. Now, Dalen... You guys in your in the academy, I mean, I know that you were there at the same time with Tyson. Yeah, with yes, with Tolani wow. and I was with Tolani Serrero also yes. there. Uh, Shamir Doughty, Alexander Ko, who's is still is playing like uh Greno Scott and them, they just got promoted to the first team, Nazir Ali and them. So it was a good time yes. during those years, you know, with the amount of players that came through. Sure. And I mean, with, with your team, you had, you had so much talent. And, you know, there was the whole, obviously, the whole Dutch influence. Were you guys basically taught to play? Like, were you taught to play in a Dutch way? And do you feel that that's helped your game in any way? Well, I think the Ajax Cape Town, you know, was like 
Ajax Amsterdam was the mother city of obviously, and I think like the philosophy was was based on Ajax Amsterdam, which helped a lot because the coaches would go do like coaching courses in Amsterdam. I would think and then learn the philosophy and stuff. So I think like it was based on Ajax Amsterdam, and it helped a lot of players because I mean like soccer is a simple game, mm. but. It's the hardest thing doing the sure. simplest thing, you know. It's like Yo- Johan Cruyff said that, I think. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. He and was you, the one with it. It's and you one. obviously then got to travel. You got to play tournaments in Europe and, and that. Yes. Now, I was blessed, you know, in that sense where at a young age, I got the opportunity to travel with other guys overseas. Because I remember going overseas, I, was, I think I was 15 years old. Mm. Then I went with Coach Kevin Johnson. He sure. took me to go play a tournament with the reserve team. And... Although I didn't play as much, but I got to experience that. Mm. And then I went again with my age, age group later on. And, you know, like, they're just playing amongst those people, you know, and you surround yourself with, sure. with, with the experience and the people, you, the new environments, you start to attract that into your life. So, I mean, you... Yeah, I'm, you yes, were, yes, 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 boss. You were part of the team. I can't recall the year, but you guys won the Bay Hill, right? Yes, correct, correct, correct. I think you, you were the... It was in 2008. I think it was 2008, yeah, just Eight, 2008, yes. correct. And I think you were the player of the tournament. <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, but, uh, we, but to be fair, we had a good team, though. Sure. Like, I mean, we I, really had a good team. Because I remember the team, and now this is, this is what I don't understand. And I spoke to Tato Mukeke of Cape Town City. Um, yes. Because I was specifically talking about this age group, like... 1990, 1989, 91, you know, that sort of age. I mean, I look at the quality that you guys had. I mean, you, Tulani. Uh, no, thank you. I mean, yeah, so no. Samir and all those players. And I also look at, for example, Super Sport. They had the likes of Kermit, Zongo, all those guys, you know, Mokocho. Yeah. It was just. Kamu uh, and exactly. There was so much talent in that age group. You know, I think a lot more was expected. Why do you think that, you know, looking at it today, um, we don't have maybe as many players from that age group that are maybe playing, you know, the Champions League in Europe or, you know, in the bigger leagues? Because I think that's what was expected from that age group. Yeah. Well, life happened. That's what I call it. Life happened. And you know, like, when I... You, mean, you know, when you grow up and you're young, you're ambitious and stuff, and then you yes. start getting introduced to certain, like, lifestyles. And, mm. and I think, like, life happened, and some of us chose this part, others chose, not to say that this was right and that was wrong, but mm. I think we all just had different views and different backgrounds, and I think that's what happened. But I do recall, though, like, that age group during that time, it was really... There was a lot of talent in South Africa. Okay. There was truly a lot of talent. But I, my only, is, like, if I have to sum it up, I just say life happened. <laughs> I mean, like you say, you played with so many good players. But if you had to pick one from, let's say, from Ajax in the academy, especially your age group, who was the one yeah. player at the time that you looked at and thought, this is probably the guy who stands out? Oh, uh, let me see. Well, there was a lot of good players, to be honest yeah. with you. But like, that stood out for me. I would say Tolani Serrero. Not because he's playing overseas, in it, but like yeah. the first year he came to Ajax, he wasn't that good. I remember still. Like I thought, like okay, now nah, he's. A... But then we had the break, and he came back again the following season, and he was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Like I still told him, like, what did he do there? Like, what happened? Like, his soccer <laughs> just changed like so dramatic. So I would say Tolani Serrero. Well, what what position? Firstly, what position did you play in the academy? Mostly because I mean there was uh, Cole was there, you were there, Tolani was there. So what was your favorite position and which position did you play the most? And what's your current, uh, currently? What's your favorite position? Are you an eight, a ten? Wide player? <laughs> I'm a versatile player. <laughs> I think that's that's from the IX system where they move you around a lot. But like 
when I was playing in Ajax in the youth coming up, I was playing in the middle. So you can say like a, a box-to-box sure. midfielder. Sure. And then a year later, I played defensive midfielder, and then I used, and then I moved back to the midfield again to six, eight, a box to box. So that was like my normal positions in the youth. But then when I went overseas, I was playing also in the middle when I signed at Ajax Amsterdam. But when I moved to Belgium, they put me on the right wing, and I did well on the right hand side, so they kept me there. Sure. So you can say my positions, it's all over the place. But like my youth, where I where I was brought up was in the middle though. That was my position, a midfielder. And when did you get promoted to the first team? Was it around that time, 08, 09? Uh, no, I I was 17 at the time. It's when Mushin Etrigal was there. Okay, yes, yes. So I just got like, yeah, so Mushin Etrigal, he's the coach that took me to the first team, told me to come train with them. And then I just signed with the first team. That's the same year. I went overseas for trials and then I signed there at yes. IX Amsterdam. So I had to come back for a year because I was still too young to go to IX mm. Amsterdam. So that year I spent at IX Cape Town and then I played in the Bayou tournament and then I left when I turned 18 and then I went abroad for the following season. But but you didn't really play much. I think maybe one or two games. No, in, no, no. In the PSL? I went, yeah, with, with Mushin Etrigal, uh, before I turned seven, I think I just turned, I was 17. I played maybe like four or five games where I played substitutions, but I only came in 10 minutes, five mm-hmm. minutes, 15 minutes, you know. Mm-hmm. And then he left the following season, then I went for the trials and coach Craig Rosley was the coach. And that season, unfortunately, I didn't play. I don't even think that season I played a match, to yeah. be fair. And then I left for overseas and then mm-hmm. the rest is history. Yeah. Now, now when you when you get to Ajax Amsterdam, I mean, firstly, um, I think naturally a lot of people immediately compared you to Steven Pinar. You know, I think the that, now it's an honor though because I'm a big fan of Pinar. Yeah, He's, because you was like my role model. You know, I can imagine. I mean, the similarities are there. I mean, you know, almost similar kind of players, and you both sort of follow the same path from Ajax Cape Town, then Ajax Amsterdam. You know. So, but was it something that you were always aware of that, you know, people would always look at you like, um, he is another Steven Pinar. Is there something you even thought of or were you aware of it? Mm-hmm. To be fair though, like I heard it a couple of times at Ajax, they, they used to mention it. But I also think because that time I had the cornrows going also on and sure. Pinar was with the cornrows. So, but like I always looked up to Pinar, like he was one of the guys that I thought, yo, this guy is very talented. Mm. And then the fact that he went overseas, though, that was just like, uh, uh, because if you go play at Ajax, like it was a dream of mine to go play in Europe. Mm. And I was blessed enough to get the opportunity to go there. Mm. And just following in that part that Pinar was like, you know, and getting to meet him, the person he is. And then I just like, it was for me like something that I can, I even got the opportunity to play with him at Wits, you know? Yes, yes, yes. So... So for me, like, I feel blessed that I got an opportunity to play with someone that I actually looked up to and he was like a role, role model. So yeah. I don't mind people saying like what they said though, but you know, you, at the end of the day, you want your own identity. Sure, sure. So, you know. And I mean, you now get to Holland. How different was it um, compared to South Africa? And did you find it hard to adapt? What? What what made it difficult, if at all, for you to adapt to you know to things that side? To tell you the truth, the first year wasn't that difficult because that's more excitement. You're running on excitement. The second year, I started feeling it. But what they do is when you go abroad, they put you into a family, so you can acclimatize, or not like acclimatize, but adjust to the you know the culture and everything there, which they helped a lot. But like over there, like I just find the people to be more. I don't know how to say. You know, South Africans, we very, we we find people to be around. And oh. There they were more serious and more driven, I would put it. Mm. So like being in that environment, learning that, I was something else. But soccer-wise though, you have to focus there. Eh? It's not mm. one day off, one day on. You have to be focused all the time. So, but the adjustment was nice though, because I was one of those guys that just, I loved new things. I loved new 
opportunities, I wasn't afraid of change. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the fact that I got the opportunity to go there, although I was still young, I actually embraced it because I know there was a lot of kids that would have loved to be in my shoes and sure. I was now the fortunate one to go there. So I embraced the opportunity. So you, you spent your time there in the, reserve, in the reserve team, right? Yeah, correct. So when I went there, I signed with the first team, but it wasn't yet. So only when I start with the first team, then automatic. But I was busy with the second team. And then I went to go train with the first team. And then I finished the first year with the, with the second team. And then I went with the first team on mm. training camp the second season. And then I came back again. And then they wanted to make me a right back. And yes. you know, like, I didn't feel like I wanted to play right back. You know, when you're young and mature, then you don't want to, like, Sure. So I just decided, nah, I don't want to play here anymore. Like, I would rather go pursue my career to where I grew up playing. Like, mm -hmm. That's when I decided to go to Belgium. But oh. looking back, though, I would have, I would gladly have, if I knew what I knew now, I would have gladly have to go play on the right back, you know? Yeah, because I think we've seen it, that's with, how we learned. We've seen it with, with a few players, they, especially midfielders. It seems like... And Dutch coaches seem to like it. I see. I remember Rudy Kroll did it with Opa as well. You know, made him play it right oh, back. Yeah. And we all, right what, what is he doing? And when he came back and played him in the midfield, suddenly he was ready. So there seems to be some sort of method to it. You know? To it, yeah, no. But you see, like that's why I say, like the best teacher in life is experience. Sure. Like now I know better, but had I not gone through that, I wouldn't have known like what I know now. That's why I say, if I could go back. When I was 19 years old, I probably would have said, nah, I'm fine, I'll go play on the right back. I'm cool with it. But like, you know, being young and immature, then just, no, I want sure. this, I don't want that. Like, you know? So, Who are some of the players, you know, who are maybe currently playing today, who were at Ajax Amsterdam when you were there? Either in the first team or even you in the reserve team? Yo, I haven't checked the Ajax in a long, but I can tell you that I played with Daily Blunt. That, went to Manchester United. He was also in the second team when I was there. And then the time when I left, he was promoted to the first team. And Toby Alderweireld is playing at yes. Tottenham Hotspur. Yes. He was also in the second team and he's also a guy that like got promoted. So I haven't checked the team. I'm going to lie to you if I say like this player or that player. Did, I have to go through it. Did Ericsson arrive after you left? No. no. Ericsson was there. Uh, funny with Ericsson though, because Ajax bought him. I remember when I was there, Ajax bought him, but he wasn't playing in the reserve team because he was younger than us. Yes. So he played in a year even lower. But then he got promoted before all of us in the second league. He got promoted first to the first team. And then all the guys were, I remember still like saying, ah, he didn't even come through us, you know, the second <laughs> team. But then he got promoted, but as you can see, his quality though. Yeah. Like the quality, like. So then he got promoted to the first team, but then we also started to go to the first team, you know, training and that type of thing. But it is, is there something? So Ericsson that, was. Is there something that you picked up immediately? Like, did you see the, like his talent, or is it has he surprised you in any way, or was it? No, I just felt like for for his age, I felt like he was very good. Like he could read the game very well because mm -hmm. he would make like runs off the ball that you would not expect him to make sure. at that age, you know. Mm -hmm. Not to say that I was so much older, but like there was like I thought he was playing in a younger age group because he was younger, mm -hmm. and then we would train sometimes together. Then he would, then I would see like certain things, and you know. But I didn't play because I didn't know him at the time, you know. Mm -hmm. And and then and then you you moved to Belgium. Um, I think you had a very good spell there. You you, you played quite a lot of games. Uh, was it? Yeah, no, definitely. It was Lies? Is that how you pronounce it? Lies. Yeah, Lierse Eska. I just say Lierse, yeah. like, you know, like Lierse. Yeah. So, my Belgium spell, I would say, was my most successful overseas. Mm. So, it, after making a change from IX Amsterdam to go there and I was playing week in, week out, I didn't feel like it was a mistake or anything because I was mm. playing and I was, you know. So, mm. I don't regret making a decision, you know. Mm. And then... You then moved to to Poland. Oh, now, the, the, the first thing I'll ask you is, there's a perception. In fact, I think it's more than a perception. I think it's something we see often of, you know, like those parts of the world, you know, problems with racism and that. Oh. Did you ever... I actually had that. 
I've never had that experience there, mm-hmm. but I heard that what people mention like uh, Poland is known for racism. But to be fair, I I didn't experience it. There was not one incident that I can recall mm. where someone would walk up to me and be like, "Yo, you know, like in a certain or make like a comment to me." Never. Mm. And I mean, in terms of the football, so why Poland? Was it was it a step up from Belgium? Do you think, or what motivated? What was the reasons that motivated you going there? Uh, there was a lot of aspects to it, though. But Poland was it's more physical going there. But like it's it's really a long story, though, mm. and I can't like you know like the details. But it, I wouldn't say it was a step up from Belgium. Because I feel like in Belgium, there's a lot of quality players and you there's like scouts always come look at Belgium. That's why I feel like when you come from South Africa, Belgium is the perfect place to go to. Because yeah. that's where you can develop your talents and there's a lot of variety there and scouts come there. But like Poland, I just felt after being three years in Belgium, I was playing a lot. My third season, I got injured. I was out six months and then I came back. So I just felt like I wanted to leave because I was too long at one. Mm. So I felt like maybe I rushed it a bit. I should have stayed another year or two there. But I was just like, now I want to leave. And that's why I ended up in Poland. I was hasty, like I was in a rush. Mm. Like there's a lot of decisions I look back where maybe I shouldn't have done it. But, you know, it is mm. what it is at the end of the day. But but would you say your your spell in Poland was, was successful? I mean, you did play. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, no, no. I wasn't bad, though. It wasn't like I played in Poland. People there, I loved them. The country was nice. The league was good. We came second at that year. Mm. We lost to, I think it was Warsaw. Legia Warsaw, that, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah, Legia Warsaw won one. But it was good, though. I enjoyed it there, but when opportunity came for me to go to Germany, now, now we all know Bundesliga is like... Yeah. So I, I took an opportunity to go there because there was a lot of players going from the second league to the first league. Mm. And I just felt like, okay, this is an opportunity where I can, you know, go play mm. in the Bundesliga. I mean, Although I, it's in the second league, but maybe I can do well and then I can yeah. get the opportunity to go to the Bundesliga, to the first league. I mean, how was that experience? It was 1860 Munich, right? Yes, correct. So, and it's, it's, it's right there in, you know, in the heart of Germany. Um, firstly, in terms of the lifestyle, how did you find the lifestyle in Germany? I actually enjoyed it, though. Although the German people are not very friendly people, but once they get to know you, they're very nice people. Because I used to tell my teammates, like, you guys are always so angry, like somebody took your food or something. Yeah. And that was like something. But then they explained to me, it's just like the culture there. Mm -hmm. But then once I started to get, like, they started to get to know me, they were, you could see, like, the other side of them. Sure. You know? Mm -hmm. But, like, the soccer there, though, it's very disciplined soccer. Mm -hmm. I was like really disciplined and I enjoy the lifestyle a lot there because like you know people if the sun comes out people are out and about you see them chilling like they had this place called the English Garden where it's like just like a park area but it's like huge with just grass and people will go sit there you know like when you go out and have a picnic and stuff then you see like the school kids the varsity people they go sit there they just chill in the sun they like but you obviously you know winters are just cloudy days so they appreciated the sunday yeah where you but us we just get sun you don't even care where it's like <laughs> yeah it's sun it's just there we know it's coming tomorrow again yeah. where day it was a bit different you know it's sunny everybody's out and about and there was a lot of things to do there so i enjoyed my time there i was three years there mm. and and the, the football in terms of the style how was it different from poland how was it different from belgium even Holland. It was more, it was more, I would say like, for me, it was more direct and more disciplined in your positioning sure. on the pitch. So you can't play on the left and then you find yourself on the right or like, yeah. they were very strict on that. Where I feel like in Belgium, you could express yourself more because, you know, sometimes you need to make a run into a certain position. Or mm-hmm. There they were more disciplined in it. And like a friendly match was like a cup final day. They took mm. everything really serious. But as you can see, they, that's why Bayern Munich is the team that they are. Yeah. A very good team. And like, I mean, that's from the culture there. 
So like that's in Germany, that was for me, like if I could take it from Poland and Belgium, Germany was more disciplined in the posi- like the positioning on the pitch type of thing. Sure. And did you guys ever come close to, to, to getting promotion to the... To, to the be Poland? fair though, my two years there, my three years there, uh, so I was two years there, I played my second season, I played a lot. The first season, I didn't play a lot. We never really got close to getting promoted. Mm. Like, I don't recall like the first two seasons. The third season, we got relegated. But mm. my contract was done there. So yes. what happened was, I already signed the contract. I was busy with the other team because I was a free agent. Yes. So I signed with the other team. And then, unfortunately, the team I signed for the second half of the league, they lost all of the games, which I found to be like unbelievable. Yeah, because they were just promoted that season. Mm-hmm. First half of the season, they were number two or number three on the low. And then second half of the season, they just got, they lost everything. They they drew, drew. And on the last day of the, the game days, they lost against Stuttgart. And they went down, yeah. They went down, yeah. So mm-hmm. that's the year when I came back to South Africa. Also. Oh, and we'll talk about South Africa just now. But why do you think your Bafana career just didn't really take off? I mean, you're in Europe, you're doing well. I mean, I would have expect we would have expected you to play to have played a bit more for for Bafana. Why do you think? I mean, I always ask myself, why is this guy never in the national team or isn't playing as much? Do you think it was just a question of having other players in the position, or what? What was it? Yeah, I just think, you know, um, national team, it's always an honor to go there, first of all. And I love going to the national team. But, you know, like, there's just, like, sometimes you, like, I, me personally, I know when I used to go national team, I just never felt like I performed well, mm. you know? And I felt like there's a lot of South Africans, good players, and they did well in that positions where I did well, even when I was doing well in Belgium. Mm. I used to come a lot home uh, under Coach Pizzo. Then I get a call up, a call up, and then I used to play like of the game. But mm. I never felt like I performed at my best, you know? Sure, sure. I don't know what it was. You know, like sometimes it's just uh, the environment. Sometimes you don't feel comfortable. Sometimes, I don't know. Mm. But I just felt like I never did well. Mm. Whereas I was doing well with my club overseas. Sure. Now that's always that will always be a mystery to me, like why I never did well at national team. Mm. I know I did well at under seventeen, under twenty national team, but Bafana I just never got like the hang of I don't know. Never got the hang of it. So but personally for me, like I never felt like I played well. Sure. You know? I mean you played in the under seventeen, you played in the under twenty, right? Um yes. I, mean, I look at that group, like I mean, we've spoken about it earlier. It was a very good group. Um, the twenty, I think, two thousand and nine, the World Cup in Egypt. The work in oh. Egypt, yes. I mean, that team was. I mean, you guys are probably you're probably after Ghana. You're probably the second best team in the in the tournament. You know. Now, yeah, Ghana won the, the World Cup that yeah. that year. And you almost beat them. I think it was in the last sixteen. Yeah. Or the quarterfinals. Yeah. I mean, that, that's how good that team was. I mean, was, you were there, Kamu, Jali, and you know, so many good players. But Rama, yeah, Rama there and, was yeah. a lot of good players. Uh, you know, that's that's what I said. Like it was a good group of players. Yeah. And maybe it's that's why it's so important to keep like like a group, like mm-hmm. a a group, uh, like a good group together. Like to nurture him like up and up. So I think like after that though, a lot of us went our separate paths and mm. we made our own choices. Like some went PSL, some went abroad, some mm. just didn't play anymore. I know it's weird though. If I think back to it also, like I would have liked yeah. to see that team go to the under 23 teams. Mm. But as you know, there's always new players coming up and more hungry, they hungry and stuff. So it was unfortunate that the team had to break up though. Mm. But but do you think it's a, it's maybe a lesson for Safa? I mean, the way I see it, once you've got a group like that, I mean, yes, new players can come in, but don't you think we need to really make an effort when we've got a group like that to try to keep them together as much as we can? 
I I agree with you on that part, but you know, like I can't say what the South Africa, what SAFA or what you know our a government body, the soccer government body has to do. Like they got their own beliefs and their own ways, just like I got my own. Mm. But I would have, but personally for me, I would have liked to see the same group. Like, mm. but you know, you can't take just a certain group because there's other players that are just, coming, they also yeah. coming and they also want to play. Mm. So I understand that part, but it would have been nice though. Mm. But I feel like if you got a special group together, you should, you should take care because like you can nurture that group to become like the Bafana team in the future. And you can always add players, but mm. you should have like a core, core group. That's my pers- personal belief. And, and who was, I know you said that Ajax, the standard player would be Serrero. Would he also, was he also the standard player for you in the national team or one or two others? I, I, national team, I felt like Toto was special there though. But like yeah. there was too many players there that was really good that I can't. Because you must, there was George Maluleka also, Kermit was there. There was, yeah, now nah, there was a lot of good players. Like yeah. I, I can't pick out a certain one because I think like, it's from all those different academies, and I think yeah. everyone's ability combined nicely to form their team. So I can't be specific and say no rare player was like yeah, they were yeah. all good. All right, and then I mean, when you when you came back to Vit, I mean, firstly, um, there's this perception that our current players um, maybe give up on Europe too soon. Um, I mean, what's what's your comment on that? I don't know what to say though. You know, like I don't know, like because when I came back, like for me, it was like I wanna come back. Like I had my, I was nine years in Europe, so coming back for me was like, no, I wanna come now back to South Africa. Like I wanna, you know, I, I would like to play in South Africa. Mm. As far as when other people come back, I don't think some people just come back because they can't cut it in Europe. Sometimes you just want to come back because you want to come back, regardless of the soccer or like, because like, you know, like, I don't want to say this. Uh, I can't explain it, man. Like for me, my personal reason, I wanted to be back in South Africa. I, would, I want to play in the PSL. As you know, like I didn't play a lot in the PSL before I went abroad. So I wanted to play in the PSL while I'm still, running when I'm still like, you know, of age, not come when I'm already like old, old and I can't mm. run anymore and stuff. So for me, it was, I want to come back to South Africa when I can still compete and stuff. But but do you think having such a good league locally, um, do you think it maybe affects our players' desire? Because I mean, take someone from any country in Africa, uh, let's say Cameroon or whatever, if he's playing in Europe, he has to make it work in Europe. And even if he's sick of Europe, he's not he's not gonna go back to his country and you know still have a decent career yeah, no. and decent yeah. money. Uh, so do you think having the fact that the PSL is such a good league and you can earn a decent living, do you think that could maybe be the reason why our players are not, you know, so yeah, but like no offense to the African countries and that I think like South Africa is like a wonderful country country sure. compared to African yeah. so like coming back home it's not like it's a huge blow coming from Europe mm-hmm. and you come coming mm-hmm. whereas I think if you had to go to an African country where you know like poverty is way higher than here in South Africa sure, sure. and like so that's why they make it work there as long as they can mm-hmm. whereas in South Africa you can still come home you can still live like a decent life mm-hmm. you know and I mean the soccer year so you get a decent salary so sure. it's still Okay, lovable and enjoyable. Mm. Plus your family is here. Where I understand like the Africans, like when they go to Europe, they make it work there. And then afterwards, I think majority of them live there. Sure, sure. Then they don't go back. Where South Africans, we always tend to come, come back, back yeah. home. Yeah. Because I feel like our country is like, it's far better than all the Af- African countries, you know, mm. in that aspect. I mean, you didn't move to Vitz. Um how did you how do you find the the adjustment from I mean you had been in Europe, you said nine, ten years, and then suddenly Yeah, nine uh, Yeah, you're now back. How did you find the adjustment, you know, to now get used to playing locally again? This is the first thing when I came back home and we played, I think of my first match back home was against Golden Arrows. 
Yes. The game was so fast. Like there's like counter after counter after counter. There's no stop in between. Whereas in Europe, they would like go counter and they like slow the game yeah. down. Then you get like a burst of speed now and then. Here in South Africa, it's just like going back and forth. Like, yo, I was just like, yo, this game is fast. I need to watch it because this game is up and down the whole yeah. time. That was like my first experience. So that's interesting. So, so you're saying that, and I think I've heard one or two other people say this. So you're saying the game here is actually faster because most people would think it's the other way around. No, like here, yeah, it's like, I feel like here in South Africa, we run a lot. Uh. Like we really run a lot, and the game is like counter counter. It's like it's like really really fast. I was telling like when we played the Golden Arrows, I think yeah. I got substituted to, for Pinar, and he came. Yes. In. I just told him your game is fast, like really fast. Like. Yeah. But you know, like when the season starts, maybe it was because you know you were hungry to play again, and mm-hmm. people were like going at it. But like over the course, also you had matters, but I realized like. In South Africa, the players run much more than what players run in Europe. Mm. And but is it maybe different with let's say some of the bigger teams? Like for example, do you find that when you play let's say Sundowns or Chiefs, um, is it yeah. is it as fast or is it maybe you know a bit? Does it feel a bit more like the European yeah. way, more tactical and whatever? Yeah, no, like all the teams got their different ways. That's why I said my first game against Golden Arrows, maybe because it was the first game in Golden Arrows, they work on yeah. counter, it was fast. But all every team got their own style. Mm. Like with, even when you play Sundowns or Chiefs, like they pass the ball, there's more, you know, like the, the, yeah, yeah. the style of play and that. But like, just like if I have to sum it all up and like, I do believe that in South Africa, the players run more than in Europe. Mm. But each team got their own way of playing. But just in oh. general, like there's a lot more running involved here. And that's why in Europe you can play for longer. You'll see people at 38, 37 in Italy. They're mm. still playing. And then you ask yourself, how is that possible? Mm. Then in South Africa, you hear about us, you'll see like it's now starting to change, as you know, with Kikana, like you saw with uh, they yes. starting to yes. go old, and which is a good thing. Yes. Because I don't think age should be like a barrier. If the mm. person is still capable of going at it, then why not? Mm. Mm. So, but I just do believe in South Africa, we run much more. And how, how was it uh, playing for Gavin? How, how is he as a coach? Yeah, no, all the coaches got their own styles of play. Like now with coach Eric Tinkler, so all of them got... Uh, my time did, but I enjoyed it. I think Vitz is a very, it's unfortunate now the club got sold, mm. you know, after so long. But I enjoyed playing under coach Kevin. Uh, my first season, I played much more than compared to my second season. But all in all, like, I enjoyed it and I learned a couple of things from him. Now, I mean, he was, he was on our show actually um, a few weeks ago. And one of the things he said was, he does not believe there's such a thing as a South African style of play, you know. Um, yeah. And I mean, I do, I do disagree with him. That's you know, but that's my. I, I do believe there is such a thing. Um, yeah. What's your take on that? Do you believe there's such a thing, or is football football? It doesn't matter. Yo, for me personally, I think. Uh, Soccer is a universal language. Sure. And I and I think like each country's got their own style of play. Sure. Like if you go to Southern America, you watch them play. Yes. You yes. go to like I told you in Belgium they played like I felt like it was more like South Africa. Mm-hmm. And then you go to Poland, it's more physical. Then you mm-hmm. go to Germany, it's more tactical. Yes. So like, but at the end of the day, soccer, soccer. Sure, sure. But just everyone's got their own style of play of it you know mm-hmm. so in saying that i do believe that i agree with you on that one though. sure like there is like a south african style of play but at the end of the day soccer soccer it's a universal language like sure. going from place to place overseas and like even though i couldn't speak the language mm-hmm. but we all knew you need to score there this is yeah. the run you need to make this is the pass you need to, you know, like it's the same language. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. 
And then how does your move to Maritzburg then happen? How do you, how do you end up there? Uh, well, my contract at WITS ended. So I had a year and an option and then I stayed the, the two years there. Mm-hmm. And then after that, uh, I came here to Maritzburg. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm enjoying it there. Yeah. How's Coach Eric? I mean, he seems, you know, he seems to get most of you guys to, you know, to play very well. Um, how is he as a coach, and why do you think he has done so well with the team? And why do you think that the players? I mean, from the outside, it just seems, just looks to me like the players want to play for him, you know. And and yeah. why is that? No, like he's a very good coach, uh, and you know, we got the group a good group of players here. Uh-huh. So if you have a good group of players, it makes it easy to play. Uh-huh. And as a coach, all you have to do is just motivate them. And I think like that's where the players come in where they can see like the coach wants the best. Uh-huh. Wants the best. You just want to see them play to the best of their ability. Yes. So, yeah. but ultimately it's like he's a good coach and he knows what he's doing. So. Sure. Because I, I mean, I particularly enjoy, you know, what's, whatever's happening in the midfield, um, with you, with Keegan, with Miguel. Um, I mean, that that combination just seems to work. What is it about you guys? Why do you think you seem to complement each other so well between the three of you? I think it's like just like we respect each other as players and we work for each other. And I think like that goes a long way because we want to see each other do well. Mm-hmm. So like working and playing with, you know, there's different being nice with someone and then actually like when you're with someone and you want to see them excel at what they're doing. So I think like if you work for one another, it benefits all of us. Mm-hmm. And I think like that has been with the whole group, I think. Like, sure. you know, if we play for one another, it can only benefit us all. Yeah, sure. And mm-hmm. um, what are you guys looking to achieve? Uh, as a team, are you looking to make it into the top eight? Uh, you know, maybe yes. win a couple. We, yeah, but we we would have liked to like you know like win a cup or so, but it wasn't to be though. But we're playing for top eight, mm. so hopefully we still got five games remaining. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had unfortunate blunder now with uh, black black leopards. Sure. Uh, we lost three, two, but you know, after not playing five months, it's you, as you can see, it's like difficult coming yeah, back yeah. again. But it's for everyone the same, so you can't use that as an excuse. But okay, mm. it's soccer. Some you win and some you lose. Mm. You, uh, but we got five more games, and we would just we would love to make it make it in yeah. a top eight. You've list, You've recently lost uh, Sianda Tulu. I think yes. he's going. To, I think he's going to Israel. Um, I mean, how? Yes, good. How is he as a player, and um, how much no. do you think it's, it's going to affect the team to, you know, to be without him? To play, no, we got like real mercy on that Kulu, but we got good players that can, you know, that can uh, take up his position here and like make it work. But I played with Sianda when I was younger, also, mm. but down the twenties, he was also in the group at the time, sure. and that's how I got to know him. Mm-hmm. So like I know Sianda from a young age also and coming here to Maritzburg, meeting him here at Maritzburg, he's a very good player and I wish him all the best of luck there. Uh, he's still he's 29 now, 28 yes. I think. So he's, the fact that he went there, like I think he made a good choice going there at this, at this time, of you know, because he's still young also, not yeah. like young, young, but still like still some football to go there and to yeah. play. Exactly. Uh, but we got here yeah, very good defenders and players, so I'm sure we'll still be okay. Yeah, I mean we're almost wrapping up now. But so you you are 30 now, right? Yes, correct. I'm a 1990 baby. Yeah. What's what's the what's the plan um, for Dalen going forward? I mean, um, do you plan to retire at Maritzburg? I mean, I've read I've read things about you know. <laughs> Big three interest. <laughs> I've read things about the big three um, being interested, and you know, w- what is Dalen's plan? Uh, do you would you even go back to Europe, or would you want to finish your career here, specifically at Marysburg? What is it that you still want uh, out of your career? 
to tell you the truth, like, okay, you know, when you turn 30, you feel old, like, yo. But mm-hmm. I still feel like, no, man, I still got soccer left in me. Yeah. So, like, for me personally, I would still like to play another five to six years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as far as teams going, I'm enjoying my soccer matters, bro. And I, to tell you the truth, I never thought as far as like, no, I want to go to this, I want to go to this, I want to go. I was like, because I just got like a year married, mm-hmm. a year ago married. So for me, it's like more like settling down. Mm-hmm. But I enjoy playing. So, mm-hmm. and I'm enjoying my soccer year. We're enjoying our life in Durban. So I can't really complain like how things are now. Though. Sure. So, so, so Dylan is not going to the big three. At least not next season. No, Dylan is happy at Marisburg. Like right now, I'm happy at Marisburg. I'm good. I'm good and poor. I, I can't complain here. Okay. Now, and Bafana, do, would you still, is this something that you still no, think would, about? Would, yeah, like, you know, with performance wise, though, you always play too. That's why I say it's always an honor going to Bafana. Mm. But I always feel like I'm not playing at my best. Like, at that time, but you don't know, yeah. like, you know, what age comes maturity and maybe sure. you can rectify that with age. Yeah. But I don't know, though. But I just felt like my experience at the national team was not always on, always, like, not at its best. Yeah. So, I don't know. And I haven't been to the national team for some time. The last time I was there was when Coach Shakes was there. Yeah. Then I went for one camp, yeah. but, like, yeah, that's a while back. But like, yeah. you know, it's always at the back of my mind though, like, because it's always nice representing the country at that level. Okay, um, and a few quick ones. Uh, this is the fun part, just to end off. Um, your favorite, let me say midfielder, not player, your favorite midfielder in the world. My favorite uh, midfielder of all time. You. Well, my favorite player is, Obviously, Ronaldo, the real Ronaldo, the one from oh, the, Brazil. The Brazilian, the real Ronaldo. Yeah, because yeah, that's the time when I used to watch soccer and I was like, yo, this guy is really good. Sure, sure. But like a midfielder of all time, I would give it to Sidan. Sidan yes. was someone, you know, like, because my favorite player was playing there and Sidan was also mm-hmm. there. You know, in Real Madrid was unstoppable. Sure, time. sure. The Galactico But like, Zidane. yeah, I would, yeah, I'd give it to Sidan. But currently, but there's someone, a lot of midfielders. someone who's currently playing now. Who's your favorite? Currently playing now. Uh, let me see. I like Tony Cruz, but I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Mm. The young is also up and coming. I know he's young, but yeah, he's, he's good. good. He's, he's good. Look at him; he's really good. Though. Sure, sure. Um. Yeah. So the young Cruz. Yeah, you caught me off guard here with the midfielder now. Because you know, like when you watch soccer, you yeah. mostly just look at the guys that dribble or the guys that score. Yeah, yeah. You don't really like looking at the midfield who makes the play and who like, mm-hmm. you know? Okay, now I'm putting you on the, sp- on the spot even more. Best player in the PSL and firstly, best player and secondly, best midfielder. Don't put it so many. Ah, you're putting me on the spot now. <laughs> I'm trying to... Nah, but like, <laughs> I don't like, because I personally, I yeah. always look at players and I say, you good at that, you good at that, you good. So yeah. I never look at them like, you know, like, okay, you're the best, like, player with, like, because you get dribblers, you get others that can make a team play, they get oh. the controllers of the game, you know. So I'm going to just say like all the players in South Africa, <laughs> I um, like it the way. Okay, okay maybe l- let's try this. So you said, so you uh, you enjoy playing as a, as a box-to-box midfielder, right? So if I say to you, I'm putting together a team, you starting, you playing as my number eight, and I say to you, pick someone to play with you at number six and pick a number 10 in South Africa. You oh. are... I don't like to, nah, I don't like to like choose like that. I'm not that type. <laughs> I know like people do that, but nah. <laughs> but, but there's too much quality. You can't, you can't choose. No, there's like, there's a lot of good players. Look, there's Riva at Sundowns. There's Tabang Monari that I played. Cole yeah. Alexander is doing well. Keegan, they're doing well. Miguel is doing well. You get mm. away at uh, Cape Town City. 
Nodado is doing well. I mean, there's a lot of players that, so yeah. I can't really like, you know, say Can't like because like yeah. yeah so i say like there is good players here in south africa and i don't like to because each one brings his own quality so i'm gonna just leave it at that people okay now we'll 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 accept that um Dylan, it was <laughs> it was a pleasure man thank thank you so much thank you um so, 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 so you guys are going to be in Joburg for a while eh? yeah we're in the bubble now currently all right. Um, oh, good luck. Good luck for the for the rest of the season. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll be watching. I mean, hope you guys are gonna play better. You know, you're gonna improve from the weekend. It's gonna get better and better. Hope I'm sure. And yeah. Yeah. Let's let's hope. You you never know with soccer. You can be one game here, next game here, sure, next. You sure. know, like so. You just have to take it like it comes and just keep working at it. Hopefully, sure. the momentum will come and the team will just keep jolling. Mm-hmm. You know, get to Jal again, and then we we'll go back to how it was before the the COVID thing. Mm-hmm. Right, uh, Dalen, but, yeah, but I appreciate it, though. Eh? Sure, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much uh, for making no. time for us. Okay. Now, Kempo, you must have a good day. Hey? Sure, we'll do. Okay, ciao.